Hey guys, Tony here, and we're back again with another tech video. So for today's video, we're gonna be looking at this graphics card cooler by Ragin Tech. The graphics card whose heatsink we're gonna be replacing today is the Gigabyte G1 Gaming GTX 1060. The graphics card has two copper heat pipes to cool it and also has two 90 millimeter fan blades. The Ragin Tech Morpheus 2 comes with 12 copper heat pipes and has a cooling capacity of up to 360 watts. So in the box that looks like it was drop kicked to my doorstep, we have obviously the cooler itself. We have some mouthkits for the brackets for the 120 millimeter fans that you're supposed to be putting on this thing. The thing that you're supposed to be connected to the back of the thing so this thing doesn't fall off the GPU and a heat sink. Some thermal tape and also some thermal gel, which I don't recommend using. And a small bag of aluminum heat sinks that you can optionally use for the VRMs. And also a very handy dandy instruction booklet how to put this thing on. So I do recommend getting one of these um, uh, four pin VGA to four pin fan connectors. Uh, so this is just so that you can plug in your fans to your graphics card so that you can use the graphics card software to change the fan speed and curve and whatnot rather than the motherboard itself. So first things first, we want to remove the backplate because I've read some reviews where the backplate won't actually fit on this thing. So yeah, I'm just going to use my trusty iFixit kit. Get ready guys for the impending review for this thing. And yeah, we're just going to remove the backplate real quick. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach these brackets right here to the cooler itself. Uh, the arrows right here are pointing this way for this thing. And we're just gonna connect them right now. And so next we're gonna attach these little standoffs to the little bracket so that we can actually screw this into the GPU. After a little bit of trial and error, I figured out it is, is the second hole farthest out. In the manual, this thing does support the 10 series card, but I think in the manual, it actually doesn't tell you which holes it is. So that's not too big of an issue because it doesn't take too long just to see if the holes line up or anything like that. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty much ready for us to mount. Now we just have to do some stuff with the GPU. Alright, now that we're done putting all the aluminum heat sinks on, I did have to swap one of them out right here just because one of the heat pipes were kind of bumping into it slightly, so it kept knocking it off. So I just put a little tinier, smaller one in here instead of one of these larger ones. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't too bad at all. But yeah, um, all we're going to do now is going to attach the Morpheus 2 cooler to the graphics card. Uh, this is the point where you can actually put your own 120 millimeter fans on here with the included brackets. Uh, I'm not going to choose to because I'm going to have a little surprise for you viewers at the end. Uh, but from a taste of choice, it's going to be Jella GC Extreme. This is just what I have on hand, and it works pretty dang good. So yeah, let's go see how this installation happens. Yeah. 
You know what? I got that. Forgot something entirely. I almost picked it up. Almost forgot this right here. That'd have been funny, right? Look like a little tech with Tony Blooper, like all the other ones that we have on the channel. Nope, none here. This is professional content. All right, so we are done swapping the coolers on this thing. Uh, the surprise that I did have was that I did try to run the cooler with the graphics card installed with it uh, passively. And I actually did kind of work. I was getting around 81 degrees Celsius, which isn't too bad, but it was a little bit too warm for my liking. So I did slap two Noctua A12 fans on it. I think that's the model number, but I will post a little tiny like description up above or something like that if I do get it wrong. Uh, installation of the thing was not too horrible whatsoever, but little bits of tape were kind of finicky, but they, they gave you so much of it, in fact, that you really can't screw up. You can basically take the little heat sinks off from the graphics card and just re keep reapplying it and whatnot. And you have so much tape that um, uh, you can do multiple installations with this thing. So for example, would be if I were to upgrade my card, I can keep the cooler and I won't have to worry about buying more like thermal tape, which is really nice that uh, Radiant Tech provides you so much of it. Uh, <clears throat> thermal wise, um, it was a lot better, but the main reasoning for this thing was for noise. Um, I like to keep a very quiet system, so I'm just gonna show you a couple clips. So the first clip right here is with the G1 Gaming, and it, this is at 100% fan speed. Now this clip is with the Radiant Tech, cooler, the Morpheus 2, at 100% fan speed. This is the G1 Gaming at 75% fan speed. Now this is the Ragin Tech at 75% fan speed. And for the last of the G1 Gaming, it's 50% fan speed. For Rage and Tech, this is a 50% fan speed. So as you can hear, it is quite a bit more quieter than my G1 gaming cooler. Not to knock off Gigabyte's cooler or not, but this is like some crazy stuff right here. This is a three and a half slot cooler now. Uh, I had to move my Wi-Fi card up an extra slot be because it, it would just kind of lightly graze on my fans. And for thermals, uh, it was also extremely well. Uh, for the Gigabyte G1 Gaming at 100%, I got 62 degrees Celsius. At 75, I got 67. And at 50%, I got 75 degrees Celsius. 
but with the Ration Tech cooler, I got a, at 100% fan speed, 49 degrees Celsius. At 75%, I got 51 degrees Celsius and 50% at 57 degrees Celsius. So at the lowest fan speed with the Ration Tech cooler, I was actually getting better thermals than at the G1 Gaming at 100% 100% fan speed, which is quite impressive. Uh, yeah. Would I recommend this cooler? Extremely. It is very good. Uh, looks wise, I love the look. I love the look of having just all this bare on my heat sink right here with like the fans on. It looks really good. They do make a core edition, which is a blackened metal, which it, it's basically the same thing, but just black, which if you like aesthetics, if you want a black aesthetic, you can pick that one, but I got this one and it looks really dang good. So, yeah, I definitely would recommend it. But yes, like the video if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, subscribe for more Tech of Tony, and thank you for watching.